Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to discuss ethical voyages across the sea. Now, what does that mean? Well, what does it mean to live an ethical life? My guest is Will Weinstein. Mr. Weinstein is a financial and investment advisor and a money manager. He is currently hosting the Will Weinstein Conversation Series at the University of Hawaii. Now that series, very interesting. It examines the ethical issues with knowledgeable professionals from the worlds of business, law, medicine, politics, and athletics. It puts the questions out there and I'm gonna hopefully get some answers from Mr. Weinstein today. Good morning, Will. May I call you Will? You may indeed. Will, what is the Will Weinstein series about? Please tell us. Of course. Uh, this is the 15th year that we've been doing this. Okay. And um, it's about the things that you just mentioned. It's about, it's actually called <coughs> ethics in the real world. And so it's not so much about the philosophical aspect of ethics, but much more about what happens to all of us every day. Decisions we have to make, ethical dilemmas that we have to recognize and how to, to process them. I never tell anybody what decisions to make, only how to get there. Okay, so what are ethics? What, I mean, what, what does it all mean? What, what is the idea behind it? And, and how did you get started in doing this? And, and you know, some of your background, I, I, I'm guessing, played a role in this. Of course it did. Um, thank you for asking easy question. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, let's, let's start at the end of that. I got involved because in the last decade, things got so completely ridiculous from an ethical perspective, starting with Enron and uh, MCI, all, all of the notorious criminal things that happened. And I was in that industry, or remotely at least related to the industry, and I was embarrassed by it. And I felt that I needed to try to do something. So uh, this was my avenue. And I've been fortunate, I've been able, I've taught actually all over the world. I've taught in China, I've taught in Vietnam, I've taught in Australia. It's been a great opportunity for me, so maybe I chose the right thing to do. Okay, uh, well, look, okay. What is the purpose of your, of your series then? What, what is your goal in your series? Well, the goal, the ultimate goal is to, is to help my students figure out how to deal with with ethical questions as they arise. And as I said earlier, recognizing them, which is really one of the most important things. If you don't recognize the issue, it's gonna be difficult to deal with. But by bringing in people who have been uh, very successful and uh, who can do well and do good at the same time and exposing not just the class, but we open it to the public. So it's open to, uh, I think we had a hundred and some odd extra people on, on last Thursday, which was the ethics and capitalism class. Um, and we had four very prominent people on that panel, including one, uh, my friend Roger Berkowitz, who's a professor of sociology and other things at Bard College in New York, and he couldn't make it, so he did it uh, electronically. And so for him, he started at midnight. And uh, along with his Red Bull, he made it <laughs> till 3.15, his time. Okay, so, so your, your, your goal, you know, you, you found in your, in your business, I guess Wall Street, is, is, is that the appropriate thing to say? Sure. Uh, uh, there were things that you felt weren't right, personally. Correct. And so you wanted to be out there, perhaps as a representative of, of your profession, saying what is right. Definitely. Well, okay. Yeah. And, and so that people, young people, can learn. Uh, that's what I hear you right. saying. Well, the, well the, my classes are young people, but um, probably the average age of my students is in the 30s. Uh, a lot of they're law students, they're MBA students and executive MBA students, and they tend to have real lives and real concerns, and, and it's an elective class, and, and so you wouldn't be there if you didn't have an interest in it. And, 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 and it's to show them in their daily lives 
how to deal with these questions that come up. Correct, to, to arm them with an ability to see the problem and solve for it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the hard question. What, okay. what is ethics? I mean, what, what is, so ethics, how, that, how, how do you determine what it is? That one's not that hard. <laughs> we have morals, which are the list of the various values that we have, call them moral values, ethical values, call them what you want. And then ethics is a system by which it all gets applied. So the entire system is what ethics refers to. And, in, and it's, I use them actually interchangeably because I don't really think there's an important distinction between morals and ethics. Okay. But, but my point to my students is always that ethics is everywhere. Ethics is in everyday life that you today, you today, Mark, probably faced five or six ethical decisions so far today. Maybe you recognize them, maybe you didn't. Right. But the manner in which you deal with those things is extremely important to you today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Okay, all right. How, how, how do you know then? I mean, I, I, I think you're right. Uh, I probably, you know, should I cross the street against the light? Or okay. that, that may be, a, I don't know if that's an ethical type of a question, but every day you come up with things. How do you know which are the ones that you should deal with that are, are they all important? Are they, are, is everyone dealt with these questions that they have to deal with all the time? Or how, how do you decide which to address? I think you know in the course of events, which ones are more important? It's to, obvious. To you. It should be. To you. Mm -hmm. This is, again, this is a decision that you will make for yourself, but you need the tools to make it. So that's what this class is about. And it's about what you do when your boss comes to you and says, I want you to uh, change the numbers in the earnings statement. Mm -hmm. And you're fairly new on the job. You have two children. Uh, you need the job. You like the job. It's a good job. but. Are you willing to do that or not? And, and, what, and what means, what mechanism should you use to figure out whether it's okay or not okay? And, and, and the choice is, I have, an, I have a job and I have to support my family and I'll make money and eh, uh, if I change these earning numbers, is that a bad thing? Is that, a, and you, you, you say you use moral and ethics as the same. So how do we determine the code? How do, how do we determine what, what is moral and, or not, or what's ethical or not? I mean, well, how, how, I mean do, how, how do we know? Okay, so ethics has reached a stage where it's now uh, a profession in and of itself. So in other words, it has, it has a different kind of legitimacy than it had 25 years ago, and people would say, well, ethics is relative. It's not relative. Honesty, integrity, uh, compassion, those are things that we'd all agree constitute an ethical mind. And, and there, are, there are 12 of them, actually. I'm not going to bore you with them. But those kinds of things we can all easily agree upon. And as, and as things progress, uh, and as we get more and more deluged with things that I think are clearly questionable, both politically and economically, but mostly politically at the moment, um, we'd have to start to learn how to make those decisions for ourselves and be comfortable with them. Never, never ask anyone to do something which he or she is not comfortable with. That's, now how do you get comfortable? Well, that's the point. That's what this is all about. Where do you draw the line? Is there a, a line in the sand? And if so, how do you handle it? I always tell people, if, you, if it's not an ethical issue, walk away. You don't need to find it. You don't need to become an ethical priest. You just need to, Find a way to live with yourself and be comfortable and feel that you've done the right thing and that you're, you know, we have lots of tests like the kid on your shoulder test. What would you tell the kid on your shoulder about the action you're about to take? What would you tell your mother? How would you like to see it on the front page of the local newspaper? How is this going to exist over time? Those kinds of tests are really important. The feel test, the smell test. We, we, we want people to learn all these various things so that they can, when faced with a problem like this, they can make a decision for themselves that's informed and comfortable. And so it's kind of, a, I, I'm hearing you say it's inherent. We, we know what it is. We've been brought up. No, well, no, if I'm it, saying that, okay. that's not what I mean to say. Okay. To some extent, it's inherent. And it's to some, you know, people will, will say, well, my parents taught me this and yeah. this and that, or I'm my religions. That's all interesting, but that's nearly not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying that by teaching you a mechanism a, a series of tests that you can use. Some of them are philosophical. Okay. Aristotle, Immanuel Kant, people like that who are pretty boring. Um, 
but uh, the, we, we have one class that's devoted just to them, and then the other 11 classes are not philosophical in nature at all. It's all about the real world and what you do when you're faced with that kind of thing. I had a, a guy in one of my classes who, uh, we always make people do ethical exercises at the, in the last class, and um, so they actually live an ethical dilemma. Uh, and this guy came in and he said, you know, I work in a liquor store. We sell corked wine, right? We sell wine that's dead, gone. If we can sell it for $22, I get $12. I, something about that's bothering me. The class where I started screaming at him, are you kidding, you gotta quit this job? This is the, you know, that kind of thing. And two weeks later, he did quit, and he ended up as a food and beverage manager at Hyatt or Marriott or one of those places, it was great. But, um, you know, this happens all the time. I mean, people come in with their problems, and sometimes the class helps them solve them. People in the class, mm. occasionally I'll get involved. But I, again, I, I'm much more interested in the, in, in the process than I am. In, in, I, I, I don't want to tell Mark what he should do. I, see. I want to tell him how to get there and, okay. and how to feel comfortable with it. Okay. Now, there's something called confabulation, which is a very interesting hmm. phenomenon. And confabulating means that you tell yourself the same lie over and over and over again until you start to believe it. And that's dangerous, because that's where it all starts. And then you go this way. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a slippery path. You're changing the reality in a way. Yeah, there's a guy, uh, I think his name is Payne at Harvard, who says, you know, I lie in bed at night and I really worry about my smartest students because the line is very thin. They're either gonna become the next chairman of the board of such and such company or they're going to jail. Hmm. I, need to, I need to be able to predict that. I need to be able to make sure that the latter doesn't happen. So. How do you predict it? Do you, well, do you if, you, if, you, if you have a class long enough and you get to know the people and they get to know themselves and they, and they are able, and many of my students are able to do this, to come to me and say, or come to each other and say, hey, here's what, what I'm facing, what do you think? That's, that's called ventilation and that's a very important element. You, you give them the tools is what, is what I... Hopefully. Uh, yeah. I, that's to, the attempt. To, to make it and wait. Now, in your course, uh, and if we have a, I think we have a... a illustration of your course. Your first course, your first class was Ethics and Capitalism. Uh, and that was on July 5th, and you have some more gonna come up next week, and I guess... Uh, right, these are the seven classes that we have where we invite panelists who we okay. think are really special, and uh, well, they're all there except the last one, the Ethics and Politics. So far, Senator Barbara Boxer is coming, uh, and uh, Colleen Hanabusa is coming, and I'm gonna invite a few other people, so it, it needs to be filled in. Okay, on your first, your, your, your first talk, topic that you already had the class on. Yes. Ethics and capitalism, uh, is there such a thing? Of course, uh, I mean. Well, people, what, what, people, what is it, what, how, how does it work? Well, it, people always say to me, gee, ethics and whatever, it's, a, it's an oxymoron. Yeah, yeah, right. It's not an oxymoron, okay. there's a way to do it. Can you do it right? Can you do it well? And can you be successful at it? And feel good about it, and it turns out and there's an enormous amount of data to, to, to uh, support this, that the companies who do things um, well, meaning that, they, that they're ethically tuned in and, and pay a lot of attention, um, those companies actually make more money and their stocks do better. Wow. So you can do well and do good at the same time. And that's one of the, the themes that comes across. And there's a, you know, and I have a friend who, uh, I'll clean this up for, for this, who in one of my classes said, listen, if you have even a sense that what you're about to do is questionable, just don't do it. And that's an oversimplification, but it's a way to think about it. It's a way to think about what will I do that will make me comfortable, that I can tell my children I did the right thing. I can go home to my spouse, my husband or my wife and say, here's what happened and here's what I did, including possibly refusing to make that change and losing your job. Very hard decision, Yes, very hard yes. decision. But you need to be equipped with the knowledge. Okay, uh, I wanna, we're, we're gonna take a, a one minute break right now, and then I'm gonna come back and I wanna ask you to tell me some, the names of some of the, some of the companies that are making money acting ethically. Okay, so sure. we'll take a short break. Okay. Thank you. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. 
Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark. And every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me one o'clock on a Monday afternoon for Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, and see you then. We are back with Will Weinstein talking about ethics and getting across the ocean of our lives and the tools, maybe the oars that we need or the way to do it, the way to get across and live with ourselves uh, in business. And we're talking about capitalism, Will. And um, if you give me some examples of just some companies uh, that, that act ethically and maybe some, if you can some that there's some questions about or? Well, it's easier on the, on the I, I'll give you, I mean, Johnson & Johnson is the classic act ethically company, although recently their history has, has been shaded. But when Tylenol, when somebody put arsenic on the Tylenol, they pulled it immediately. And it cost them millions and millions and millions of dollars. But their attitude was, I can't afford to have anybody die from this. Okay. And that was obviously the right thing to do from right. an ethical perspective. It gets a little bit technical in here, but the reality of it is that the new major technology companies, okay, mm -hmm. we're talking here about Facebook and we're talking right. about Google and Amazon, yeah. they're doing things that I think are questionably ethical. Hmm. They're using your information, your data, and, and, and in many ways changing your life without your knowledge, without your acceptance of it, without your approval. Right. And, and we're all on it. We're, we're all on it, we're and, we're, on and, it. And, and it's an addiction for many people, and yeah. people talk, talk, touch their telephones 260 times a day or some number like yeah. that, which is you know, horrendous. But, uh, but that's not an ethical issue. The ethical issue is whether or not these companies can, without your permission and without your knowledge, take your information and sell it to other people mm -hmm. and use it themselves. And that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. And that, that's not a decision for us to deal with as an individual in business, well, but, we, but what we're, how do we address it? Well, we hit accept. We don't read, the, we don't read it, yeah. okay? That's probably the first mistake. And the second yeah. thing is, can you live without it? Can yeah. you, or can you find some way to, and I, by the way, right now the SEC and a bunch of other people are after these guys and we'll see what happens. But uh, I, I, my sense is that they're going to have a prolonged, difficult period because what they're doing is really, it's more than questionable. So we have to wait this out. Is, yeah. We, we don't know how. And, and that's not an ethical decision for us to make. It's for them to make. And, and we're, we have to Well, watch it's that. for them, for the government. It's, yeah. You know, there is a government, yeah. uh, sometimes yeah. hard to find, but there is a government. And, uh, and they do have regulatory authority, and they ought to do something, and they're doing it. So you're, you're, how, what they're going to do, I don't know, but at least the process has begun. You, you, have, you have a program coming up, uh, and I think it's your, your next program uh, on athletics. Mm -hmm. Athletics, money, and we're talking millions of dollars in pro athletics. Well, that's uh, why it's so important. I mean, how many businesses do you know yeah. where the employees don't get paid? And that's exactly <laughs> what's happening in college, in college athletics. Okay. Okay, and the question is, how do you feel about that? Is that right, wrong, or indifferent? It, from an ethical perspective, is it okay to, to have these kids come to college, never go to class because they don't have enough time? Okay, they're, and, pra they're practicing. Yeah, they're practicing yeah. all day, every day. Yeah. And, and not have enough money to go home when their aunt dies, it, those kinds of things. I mean, these are serious ethical issues. There are also questions about CTE in the head. Yeah. There are lots of, there, I mean, you know, what would you do, what would you do, Mark, if your team was out on the field and the other team started doing dirty tackling and all kinds of things. Would you tell your team to do it back? Mm. Think about it. Yeah. Those are the kinds of questions that we discuss. And we have some really good people, people who care about their students, care about their lives. and, and, and uh, Yeah, I, I, you have Nick Rolovich, I, I noticed, as one of your speakers right. on that. And that's, I mean, how do you deal with these, these questions is, is, is tough. It's very tough, and he's, he's, but he's very smart. And he's very concerned about his, 
his athletes. And he goes to extraordinary lengths to make sure that they're protected. So, now, you know, the NCAA is a very, very hard to understand organization. And some of the rules that come out of the right. NCAA are absurd. Yeah. So, when you have, if you have, a, for example, if you have a, a violation of some kind, they take away scholarships. Who does that hurt? <laughs> I mean, that hurts the kids who need those scholarships to go to school. Right. The whole thing is. So we got asinine. mixed questions of ethics here. I mean, you got the coaches, the players. You know, the, you well, know. The, you know, you ask a coach, what's more important, yeah. doing it right or winning? Yeah. So, you know. Woo. I mean, and 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 many of them will say, you know, if Honestly, I don't win, I don't have a job. Winning, right. Yeah. Well, you know, and these are many in many cases, not not in Nick's case, unfortunately for him, but. Uh, yeah. These are very highly paid positions. In many, many states, the, <clears throat> the athletic coach for the state right. university is the highest paid government official by far, yeah. by a factor of you know, 10 or more. Yeah, we've seen that in basketball teams. Uh, and yeah, well, the, I'm sure it's in I football. Mean, the, and, the, uh, you know, the road to the Final Four, yeah. it's an enormous moneymaker. Yeah. Who gets the money? Yeah. Where does it go? And if you win, you get go? a bonus. Oh, if right? you so you make bonus. a choice. Do I put that guy in, even though he may have some problem? I, I see that. Yeah. Where should it go? And if you and if your if your image is portrayed in some kind of a game, should you be paid for that? I mean, the, some of these things aren't all that difficult. Yeah. So that's what you talk about at your series. That's uh, what. Uh, now, now you, you you also have one that come comes up about law. Exactly. Okay. And, and you know, I'm a lawyer, uh, and I you know, I, there's ethical standards, and then there, there's moral standards. I don't think they're always the same. Will I don't think you're gonna because well, I, that, I by think, definition they're always the same. But they may, <laughs> well, I, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. But how, how does a lawyer deal with this? Did you, did you ever see the film Liar Liar? No, no, no. Well, many people who are watching this, I, I think, okay. probably have. And it begins with the teacher saying to her young students, I think they're probably six or seven years old. What does your father do? And the father of the character in question says he's a liar. And she says, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and she says, I think you mean lawyer. And he says, yeah. <laughs> so the question is, is lying OK right. in negotiations? Those kinds of things. There are lots of questions around that. And then the question, and one of the things that I tell my class is that the legal standard is pretty far below the ethical standard okay. in general. And in addition to that, very often, Laws are used to justify immoral acts. You know, I, well, Nazi Germany killed 12 and a half million people legally. Yes. So these are the kinds of things that we get into. Well, I get a little riled up when it, these oh, conversations. I, I, I understand. And, you know, I, I, I hear the situation of a lawyer, his client tells him uh, where the body is. Mm -hmm. He can't tell anybody. Well, we, yeah. have a, we have a problem with that. We, have, we, we do the one on the 26-year secret where this guy's in, in jail for 26 years, and, and the two lawyers who represented somebody else know he's innocent, and they leave him there. Yeah. And they leave him there because they can't, they can't attorney tell. client privilege. Yeah. Well, we on the ethics side fight like crazy with the lawyers over this. So what, what, do, what do you tell the lawyers? Find a way to make him, to get him out of there. To, to disclose that. There's an easy, there got to be a million ways. And, and the answer is, well, I'm going to lose my... Here's one. Here's a, here's, here's okay. a line in yeah, the sand. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I might, you know, I, I may not be allowed to practice because I'm going to lose my license. Right. Is it worth it to you to let this? And by the way, the guy was, I think it was 11-2. They were going to. His sentence was going to be death sentence. And 11 people, not 11. I'm sorry, sorry 10-2. I think or maybe it was one, 11-1, and that one or two people saved his life. And the, the lawyer said, well, if he was going to die, we would have come forward. Like, Give me a break. <laughs> Instead of life in prison. Huh? Yeah, which he says, which the, the man in question says, there's no difference between life in prison and, and, and death, death sentence. Death sentence. So, again. I, I, you, you said you've done your class all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in China uh, a, a lot, but you, you said Vietnam also and in various other places. Is there any commonality in all this? I mean, I, I, I hear a lot about China and their, their ethics in business don't seem to be the same. And uh, I, our, our president says that. So, well, I mean, how, how do you? <laughs> they're very different. I mean, there's no question. But even between those three countries, they're very different. Australia mm -hmm. uh, is much more like our system, very okay. much more. Uh, and so it's easier. I taught in the law school there for a month, an intensive course for a month. And that was really very interesting for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, I addressed the, I think there were 85 professors or something in the, uh, in the law school, and, and I got the opportunity to address them. And I, my point was, 
you guys all should be teaching ethics now, you know, as part of your class. And so this one guy, this was out of Hollywood, this one guy raised his hand and he said, you want me to teach ethics? He said, what does it have to do with what I do? <laughs> and I said, well, what do you teach? And he said, taxation. Oh, good. I mean, it couldn't have, you know, the, yeah. whole, the other 85 people broke into laughter. So, but, you know, these are kinds of things that you have to work your way through. Vietnam is interesting because Vietnam is a communist, corrupt nation. And a lot of the people really would like to change it. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you empower them or enable them or, you know, at least help them on, along that road? And I don't, have any ex I don't have any silly expectations that tomorrow morning everything's going to change. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's something that I... I well, I, how, I, how, China how do you help them? Huh? I mean, what do you do? I mean, is it being there and giving them your knowledge and your feelings about these things, is, is it your teachings? Is that, is well, that I, I, the right I, thing to do? Is that the ethical thing to do? For me, it is, but, I, but I, I think, and this is hopefully answering to some extent your question. When I started in Vietnam, I've been there twice, at, in both Saigon and, <coughs> excuse me, and Hanoi. Um, and when I started, I was very careful to say, listen, I'm not here to tell you that we're great and we do it right and this and that, because I think our system stinks. I don't think that we're any better really than you are. And so we got down on a level where we could talk to each other about what was wrong in both systems. Very important, because if you come in and proselytize, you know, I mean, and I don't, I'm not proud of our system at the moment. In fact, I'm, I'm very concerned about it. Uh, and so sharing that was a way to get them to talk about it. And at one point, near the end of my, one of my classes, people said, you know, we really would like to change things. How do we do it? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you guys are all executive MBAs. And a lot of them were real serious executives. I mean, head of big companies and this and that. I said, there are 47 of you in this room. Why not start here? Ah, you know, so those, those kinds of things. But, but uh, that... You know, when, when you do things like this, as you well know, because you're teaching also, any little reinforcement makes you happy. So. And, and in China, same, same type of feeling? In China, you, you, well, the educational system in China is enormous. I mean, you go on a college campus, there'll be, there'll be 65, 70,000 people on it. I mean, think about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and ex technologically extremely advanced, et cetera, et cetera, right. et cetera. And the, the notion, I mean, one of the important things that, that, that these people should recognize, and they finally, I think, are recognizing, is that if you have a background in ethics, you're much more likely to get the job. You talk about the value of money, value of these kinds of things. If I'm General Electric and I'm hiring people in China, and I know that you have a eth background in ethics and you understand the culture, you'll get the job and she won't. That's a big advantage. Huge. Yeah. Now, we're going to close in, a, in about a minute. But I want to ask oh, you. Oh, too bad I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you about politics. I mean, I, uh -oh. I, 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 we, you only have a minute. Good. What, what can you save, tell me about politics and ethics in well, today's world? We, we, I can first of all say, <laughs> come, come to our class because you'll find. I mean, Barbara Boxer is not going to pull any punches. Uh, you, what I think our system is completely broken, and I think it needs to start all over again. And how we do that is another question. I'm not, mm. you know, in a position to. Uh, but, 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 I, but I can recognize the problem. And the problem is, of course, being exacerbated at the present time, because if the president of our country lies three, four, six times a day, which, by the way, is not as much as you and I supposedly lie 10 times a day, but uh, his, and probably his is way beyond that. But if you have that kind of leadership, and remember, leadership is a huge, huge issue in ethics. When you have the chairman of the company that doing things openly that you know are unethical, it just says to everybody else, go for it. It's okay. Right. It's the, it, 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 you don't care. The person at Enron stole a stapler, and the next person said, well, if you can take a stapler and take it home, maybe I should take home the Xerox machine. And, may, and you know, pretty soon, that kind of thinking is what dominates. Well, so, your, your class on politics is when? When, are, when is, that's your, is uh, that? I think it's August 7th, but I could be wrong. It's down at the end of your, uh, series here at the bottom. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, yeah, August 7th. August 7th, Ethics and Politics. Uh, Barbara Boxer and Co Colleen H Hanabusa you are going to be in your... Yeah, else? I've invited a few other people. Oh, we're we're waiting to hear they can Depends whether the senators are in session or not. Okay. So. All right. Well, that sounds very interesting. Uh, I appreciate you being here today, Will. It's Thank my pleasure. I really much. enjoyed it. Thank good, you. Good to have you. Thank you.